الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, on the 16th of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal has given us this great opportunity to invite Ustaz Yahya Rabbi. Before I proceed, I would like to invite one of our students in the madrasa to come read some Quran for us, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طه ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينه وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا نارا لعلي آتيكم منها بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى فلما أتاها نودي يا موسى إني أنا ربك فاخلع عليك إنك بالوادي المقدس طوى ما شاء الله الله حسن فتح الله الحمد لله الحمد لله so now now we're gonna go to the main topic which is the feeling you're searching for in your salah. I'm going to pass it down to the stars, inshallah. Jazakallah khayran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliki yawm al-deen, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ahdahu la sharika lah, wa liyu salihin. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى صراط مستقيم صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه واقتفى أثره ليوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After praising Allah تبارك وتعالى and sending salutations upon a messenger Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام بسيط الحمد لله that Allah تبارك وتعالى has allowed us to reach this blessed month رمضان and we ask Allah just like He allowed us to reach the beginning of Ramadan, that He allow us to reach the end of Ramadan. And we ask Allah to accept our deeds. And we ask Allah to forgive our sins. And we ask Allah to make us from those who are successful in this blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah to aid us and assist us in doing all that which pleases Him. And we ask Allah to make us from those who attain Laylatul Qadri Iman and Mahtisaba. And we ask Allah to make us from those who enjoy doing these acts of worship that please him jalla wa ala innahu juwadun kareem ayyuhal ikhwatu la khawat enjoyment in worship perhaps we've never asked ourselves how can I find that enjoyment in worship? How can I look forward to this act of worship? How can I find this extremely enjoyable that I don't want to do anything else? We find certain narrations from those who came before us from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and those who were righteous who came after them that they would spend long hours in ibadah because they enjoyed it. How can I also attain that enjoyment and yearn towards the ibadah and not dread it? Some of the things that's common today that we find it is that you come to Salat al-Taraweeh and you have the Imam who's reciting very beautifully. Maybe he recites a lot and he's reciting a lot of Quran because he enjoys it. And then you have someone who's in the prayer and he's like, today he made the Salah too long. We have certain people who say, for instance, that 
When is the iftar time? I can't wait to iftar time. They keep looking at their clock. They can't wait to break their fast because they are not enjoying it. They're dreading it. Wallahi, that statement that they utter, the salah, he made it too long. I can't, I can't wait till we do iftari. I can't wait to get this over and done with. These statements are shameful statements. At least if you're not enjoying it, keep it hidden. Don't say it out loud. Don't expose yourself. That you're dreading this act of worship that Allah has blessed you with. The mentality is completely wrong. You got it awfully wrong. And with that mentality, you never shall attain the sweetness of worship. If you found it difficult, okay, keep it quiet and just avoid it. It's a voluntary act of worship, taraweeh. Right? Go elsewhere where they recite less. But for you to say that today he made it too long, and also the, what they say is long is not long. He recited one page and he's like, ah, that's not long. He finds one page too much. He would rather have him recite maybe one line, raka, one ayah. Like they do in certain places. Because he can't bear to do this act of worship. La ilaha illallah. That's a musibah calamity. It shows that something is truly wrong inside. And it's a call upon us all to just have a look and reflect and think, what is going wrong here? What have I done wrong? What is the problem that is preventing me from enjoying this act of worship that I just want to get it over and done with? I don't want to spend more time doing it. Uthmar ibn Affan radiallahu anhu wa radha. One day he stood by the Kaaba and he was praying the night prayers, praying Salat al Witr, one raka'ah, and he started Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen ar Rahman ar Rahim, Maliki Umidin, Iya can Abudu, Iya can Stain, who then a Surat al Mustaqim, Surat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Ray al Mardu, Bialehim, Walam Dalin, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alif Lamim, the Rikal Kitabula Rayba Fi. للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم he kept reciting, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. He finished Baqarah. He got to Ali Imran. He finished Ali Imran. He started Nisa. He finished Nisa. He started Maida. He finished Maida. He kept going, he kept going until he got to Min al And then he went to Rukhu. Uh, did Uthman radiallahu anhu have superpowers? Did Uthman radiallahu anhu, was he given ability that we were not given? Was Uthman radiallahu anhu someone who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala made special, only granted him something that he didn't grant the rest of us? No, of course he's virtuous. He is from the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, but he was a man just like us. But it's because of the enjoyment that he found in that ibadah, that worship, that allowed him to stay in that salah for all that long, stand for so long, enjoying it. And by the way, it is different when you are reciting Quran and when you are listening. You know when you're praying salah and you're reciting, you don't feel the standing as much as when you are standing and listening. The one standing behind, he tends to feel longer. The imam, he's enjoying it. He doesn't feel how long it is. Do we not see nowadays that uh, some of our youngsters, when they are playing their video games, their PS4, PS5, PS4 is old, huh? PS5 now. PS5. And they're up the whole night, they're playing online. And he's up from midnight all the way up to Fajr 5, 6 a.m. he's up. And he hasn't moved from his place. He's playing the whole time. He's playing online with his friends. Why is he able to do it for all those hours? Why is he able to do it? Because he enjoys it. He loves it. Uthman radiallahu anhu, the Quran, you can finish it in eight hours. You can finish the whole Quran. Maybe those whole eight hours, Uthman was praying because he enjoyed it so much. It's the difference, the contrast. Tayyib, how can I find that enjoyment? That's the question that we're going to answer today. Ayyuh al-Kiram, before I even answer that question, I want you guys to reflect on a number of things. Uh, in Ramadan, we are all fasting, sah? Okay, whilst you're fasting in Ramadan, when you're at home alone and nobody can see you and the kitchen is available, there's plenty of food in the fridge and there's so much food يعني, from maybe yesterday's iftar. So many things you have, all the desserts and all the fruits and all the different foods that you desire, that you love and that you look forward to. When you're sitting at home, no one's there, nobody can see you. 
Why don't you go to the kitchen and go eat and have a cute quick bite and quick drink and just enjoy a meal? Nobody will ever know. Why don't you do it? What's stopping you? Poor parents, you from doing that. What stops you from going to the kitchen, having a full meal and then leaving there as if nothing happened? Huh? Is it because you feel shy that Allah sees you, right? You feel shy that Allah sees you. That is one of the strangest things that I find. It's very strange. That every single one of us here, they refrain from going to the kitchen and eating when nobody can see them. It's very strange. Subhanallah. Food and drink, halal or haram? Halal, right? If you can stay away from food and drink for those hours, because you are shy of Allah ta'ala, that means you can stay away from the sins that you do when you're alone because Allah sees you, you're shy of Allah ta'ala. It's training, it shows you that you're capable of doing that. It shows you that you're able to stay away from these evil desires that are haram because you can stay away from things that are halal that you require every single day, that you're used to doing every single day, that you're addicted to. You're addicted to eating and drinking, isn't it? You eat every day. So if you're addicted to certain sins, this means that you are able to give them up. Your mind and shaitan is telling you, I cannot give up, but you can. Because you're able to give up food and drink for those hours and not go to the kitchen because you're shy of Allah. Just like you're shy of Allah in that situation, you should be shy of Allah even more when you're doing the haram that angers Allah ta'ala. Food for thought. Wow, that was a good statement. Food for thought. The first step to you enjoying your worship is that I need to get rid of those sins and cut off those sins that are destroying my life. Those sins that I'm addicted to, that I keep falling into, that I'm struggling to give up by abandoning them and using Ramadan as your training ground. This is your opportunity for you to train yourself to develop good, good habits so that you give up these sins. This is your chance. Wallahi, this is the greatest opportunity that you've been given. And you are going to be victorious. Allah Ta'ala facilitates everything for you in order to give this up. Shaitan, the shayateen, locked up. The gates of hellfire are shut. The gates of Jannah opened for you. Allah is beautifying for you every single day, Jannah. A caller calls out, says the one who seeks good, come forth, come, ta'al, aqbil. Allah Ta'ala is calling upon you. Allah Ta'ala promises to aid you and assist you. Allah Ta'ala could oblige the way to fast, which helps you in disciplining yourself to attain a self-discipline. Allah Ta'ala, He told you to pray at night and legislated that night prayer, which also teaches you self-discipline. All these factors, they are there to help you as part of the transformation that you need to attain in Ramadan. Don't take it for granted. They all matter. Every single one of these acts, they play a part in your transformation. When I, when I abandon those sins, you know what happens? Allah Ta'ala will instill a light in my heart. And that light that Allah Ta'ala puts in your heart, it is the light that's going to open for you the door of enjoyment of ibadah. Nurullah, the light of Allah Ta'ala. Imam Shafi alayhi rahmatullah. Imagine a Shafi, he has great memory. He was able to memorize just by looking once. Photographic memory, they say. Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he came to his teacher, Waqi' ibn Jarrah, alayhi rahmatullah, and he's complaining about my memory is poor, I'm struggling. Nothing like us, us Masakin, that can barely remember their names. He came to Waqi' ibn Jarrah and said to him, شكوت إلى وكيع سوء حفظي فأرشدني إلى ترك المعاصي وأخبرني بأن العلم نور ونور الله لا يهدى لعاصي. He said that I complained to Wakiy Abd Rah my poor memory and he told me abandon sins by abandon sins your memory will get better so that you can remember the deen of Allah and the Quran all these things that you're trying to remember and to keep in your heart and mind and he told me that وأخبرني, he told me that knowledge is light and the light of Allah is not given to a sinner that knowledge that knowledge part of it is what is going to enable you to attain that enjoyment in al-ibadah in worship what is that knowledge that we are perhaps uh, looking for what is that knowledge that I need to perhaps learn that will enable me to attain that enjoyment in, in worship Ramadan. Ramadan is one of the greatest demonstrations of that knowledge that I'm going to tell you about. In this blessed month of Ramadan, 
we are fasting for the whole day and yani the majority of the day we are leaving our food and drink for the sake of Allah Taala. and then when you ask some people you know when you are not eating and drinking it can be difficult you get hungry you get tired maybe you feel a bit of pain and so on but people you ask them and they tell you Allah I love the month of Ramadan even though you're going through all this difficulty and this pain, this hunger and so on, you love Ramadan. Some people, they say to you, I wish the whole year was Ramadan. Ramadan is too short, I wish. Some people want Ramadan ends, they cry. Why? The month that you were starving has ended. Why are you not happy? Because there's something that's in Ramadan that allows them to feel like that. What is that? When you know the one that you are doing the acts for, everything that you do does not matter. Has anyone here been in love before? I have. You guys been in love before? No one. Ajib. Anyone married here? <laughs> no one wants to admit it. Because why? Why? Because you're fasting, huh? <laughs> when you are in love, when you are in love, the one that you love you would do anything for them, right? Those who have been in love know. You would do anything for them. Even if that means that you go through certain pain and certain difficulty and that you exhaust yourself and so on, right? Because you love that individual, you would do anything for them. You love your mother. You guys would do anything for your mother, right? Well, I assume so. You guys are not answering. You will sacrifice anything for her as long as that pleases her and makes her happy, right? That's love. So in Ramadan, because you know Allah and you love Allah and Allah is the most beloved to you than everyone and everything. Allah Jalla fi Ula, He's the one who asks you to fast. So Allah wants you to fast and He obliges upon you, you doing this and you going through this because you're pleasing Allah who you love. That is the greatest thing that you can attain. That's why you are fasting. When people ask them, why are you fasting in Ramadan? A lot of them they say to you, because Allah obliged it upon us, because it's one of the pillars of Islam. But very rarely do you find that, because I love Allah. Because I love Allah. That should be your answer, I love Allah. Allah is the most beloved to me. Therefore, I fast for him because Allah loves that I fast. Allah is pleased with me fasting. That makes me enjoy that worship because I know Allah loves me doing this. And my, by me doing what Allah loves, I'm going to attain the love of Allah Taala. And when I attain the love of Allah Taala, Allah Taala will bless me in this life and the hereafter. And Allah Taala will make His worship easier for me. And Allah Taala facilitate all goodness for me. And Allah Taala will protect me from all evil. And Allah Taala will protect me from His punishment in the hereafter. And Allah Taala He will make me beloved to the creation of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And Allah Taala He will mention me in the heavens and praise me. And Allah Taala will assist me and aid me in all that which pleases Him. Rather, He'll guide me to it. Jalla fi ula. That's the love of Allah. Do you know what it means when Allah loves you? Do you know the value of Allah loving you? Because I love Allah. That's why from the du'as of the Prophet والسلام, that he used to say, "It is Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak, wa hubba man yuhibbuk, wa hubba amali yuqarribuni ila hubbik." Oh Allah, I ask you for your love. And the love of those who love you. And the love of a deed that draws me closer to your love. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, rahimahullah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says that we worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with love, hope and fear. Hope and fear, they have a certain limit. But love has no limit. The more love you have for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the better. Because all righteous deeds, they spring from love. The more love you have, the more righteous deeds you do. The more you love Allah, the more you obey Him. The more you love Allah, the more you worship Him. The more you love Allah, the more you abstain from that which angers Allah. The more you love Allah, you will be one who hastens to do that which Allah loves and is pleased with. That is what I need to do. How do I attain that love of Allah? How do I increase myself in the love of Allah? I need to know Allah. Wallahi, ayyuhal kiram. Allah makes us his, Himself more beloved to us. 
يتودد الى الينا الله تبارك وتعالى he makes himself beloved to us جل في علاه by telling us about his blessings by granting us all the blessings that we have الله تبارك وتعالى he blesses us without even us deserving it we are sinning we are disobeying الله تبارك وتعالى we anger الله عز وجل and الله عز وجل he continues to bless us imagine that all the sins that we did and all the acts of disobedience that we did that الله تبارك وتعالى immediately he treated us with his justice because if Allah treated us with his justice and he dealt with us with his justice we would not survive because we will be punished immediately we would not be on the face of this earth ولو ولو يؤاخذ الله الناس if Allah تبارك وتعالى was to hold the people accountable for what for what they did ما ترك الله would not leave on the face of this earth anyone ولكن يؤاخرهم الى اجل مسمى But Allah leaves them for the later day, Yom Al-Qiyamah. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, I want every single one of you now to take a deep breath in. Inhale. Don't exhale until I tell you, huh? Yalla, exhale. Imagine you had to think about breathing when you wanted to breathe. Imagine you had to think about that. Have you ever thought about that? I know for sure that I'll forget and I'll suffocate. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, your body, your body naturally, it inhales and exhales. When you're sleeping, you do the same thing. That's from the ni'am of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala we take for granted. An old man, he was approached, Bedouin man, and he was asked, how are you? Kif halak? You know, he responded, he said, Alhamdulillah, ana bi khair, madam al hawa bi balash. He said, I'm fine as long as the oxygen is free. That person, look, he realizes the blessings of Allah that we take for granted. Imagine you have to pay for the oxygen. Some of us could not be able to afford it. Like you can't afford some of the bills that we have now. The gas and electricity, very expensive, right? The energy bills. Imagine just like that, they charge you for oxygen. You had to pay for oxygen. Some, a lot of us would not be here today. I'm miskeen, I wouldn't be able to afford it. But Allah Ta'ala, He grants you that again and again. You can't even see it to the naked eye, but Allah Ta'ala, He blesses you with these ni'mas that you don't even see with you. But the ni'mah that's greater than all of those blessings, the blessing that Allah Ta'ala has blessed us all with, that Allah Ta'ala has favored us with, and that's none other than the blessing of Islam. Just the fact that you are Muslim, you know how much of ni'mah that blessing that is? That Allah Ta'ala chose you from all his slaves. And he chose you to be a Muslim. Do you know what that means? Have we shown gratitude to Allah for that blessing? I could have been one who is misguided, who does not know Allah, who does not prostrate to Allah a single prostration, does not know the path of Allah completely astray. But Allah allowed me to be born in Islam. The majority of us were born Muslim. Without us even looking for it or seeking for Islam, it came to us. What have I done to deserve that blessing? The Prophet ﷺ, he says in hadith, Inna Allah yu'ti dunya man yuhib wa man la yuhib. That Allah grants worldly matters to those that he loves and those he does not love. Wa inna Allah la yu'ti deena illa man ahab. But Allah Azza wa does not grant deen, religiosity, iman, Islam, except to those that he loves. Just the fact that Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala granted you Islam, it's a sign that Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala loves you. الله أكبر الحمد لله الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام There's no blessing greater than that That's the Rabb that you're worshipping Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Now imagine, I want you to imagine with me something here Imagine you are committing a crime You are committing a crime And then someone comes and sees you doing this crime They witness you do this crime And this person, instead of reporting you or telling others about your crime, they helped you cover it up, conceal it. And they know this, that this crime that you've done. They didn't tell anyone. They concealed it. They kept it themselves and they helped you cover it up. When you see this individual after that incident, how are you going to feel? How are you going to feel every time you see them? You're going to feel shy every time you see them. You're going to feel like this person knows something about me that others don't know about me. You're going to feel shame and shyness, right? What about Allah Jalla fi ula, who we disobey using his blessings? We disobey him using his blessings. Allah sees us. 
And Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala, He conceals us. And He covers us up for us. And He keeps it concealed until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. How can I not feel shy of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala when I know that? It should make me shy when I stand in front of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. When I know Allah, that knowledge that I have of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala, that is what's going to increase me in the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. But that rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us that He's more merciful to us than our own mothers. The Prophet ﷺ, one day he saw a mother who lost her child. She's crying and screaming, looking for that child. And then she finally found her child. She brought the child close to her and she was extremely happy. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said to the Sahaba, do you think that this mother would ever throw her child into the fire? They said, of course not. She would never do that. He said that Allah wa ta'ala, is more merciful to you than that mother is to her child. Allah is more merciful to you than that mother is to her child. A Bedouin came to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. The Bedouins, they used to ask strange, peculiar questions. Strange questions. This Bedouin Muslim, Muslim. He came to Abdullah ibn Abbas and he said to him, Ya Abdullah, man yuhasibna yawm al-qiyamah. He said, who's going to hold us account of yawm al-qiyamah? Who's going to judge us on the day of judgment? Abdullah, of course, he said, Allah. The Bedouin responded and said, إِذَا najona, Then we are safe. The Bedouin knows the Rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. Imagine your judge is on the Day of Judgment is your mother. How are you going to feel? I'm off the hook. I'm going to get away with everything. I'm going to get away with murder. Right? Because you get away with some, so many things with your mother now, right? Imagine she was your judge Yom Al-Qiyamah. Allah who is more merciful to you than your mother is going to be your judge Yom Al-Qiyamah. How can you not love Allah Azza wa Jal? How can you knowing that not increase in the love of Allah wa ta'ala? The Prophet Ali sallallahu said Allah Azza wa Jal, he has 100 parts of his mercy. One part of that mercy he brought down to the earth. 99 parts he saved to Yom Al-Qiyamah so that he grant you his mercy. Jalla fi ula. That's the Lord that you're worshipping. That increases you in the love of Allah Taala. Whatever you do for Him after knowing Allah Azza wa Jal, it doesn't matter because you know you know who you're doing it for, the one you love the most. That is what's going to allow you to have that enjoyment in worship. It's going to allow you to enjoy fast. That you are enjoying it. I know someone. Um, this person I know them for years, and they do the same thing every single year. This person is alive. They're not people from the past. They're not a story. It's a person I know real life. This sheikh, when Ramadan starts, every single day of Ramadan, he completes the Quran. Every single day, without fail. This is not a myth from the past. He's alive today. He lives in my locality. I see him regularly in the masjid. Every single day of Ramadan, he completes the Quran. In 2019, I remember we were doing i'tikaf in the masjid the last 10 days of Ramadan and he was doing i'tikaf with us as sheikh and every single day he would start his khatma 8 a.m. He would sleep after Salat al-Fajr. 8 a.m. he would be up. And he wouldn't sleep much. He would start his khatma. When everyone's sleeping, he's awake. He started his khatma, his completion of the Quran. And by the night, he's completed. Every single day. So I remember on the... 29th uh, day of Ramadan they were يعني, looking for the, uh, the moon of Shawwal and that day someone came to him around Asr time not Asr time, around Dhuhr time and they started talking to him which delayed him it made him behind on his khatma he fell behind because this person spoke to him for a little while, took some of his time, so he fell behind and he wasn't on track to complete the khatma that day. And then it turned out by Asr, they announced that Maghrib time is going to be, it's going to be Eid. So what happened? When it got to Maghrib time, he hadn't completed, he hadn't completed his khatma. Wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi, he cried like a baby. He cried like someone had died. We were all shocked. We didn't know what happened. We were shocked. The Adhan al-Maghrib went off. When the Adhan al-Maghrib went off and people were making iftar, he started crying. He broke down in tears. And he, we went to him. People thought something terrible had happened. People were trying to understand what happened. He was so emotional that he couldn't even get the words out. He couldn't even explain anything. We were trying to say to him, Sheikh, what happened? What's the matter? He couldn't explain anything. And then we find out after that the reason why he became so emotional and started crying is because he hadn't completed his 29th khatma of the Quran. 29th. Yani some of us who say, I've done it 28 times, khalas, 29 doesn't matter. La, it mattered to him. 
That's how some people are when it comes to ibadah. Why? Because they found that in ibadah. How can one sit for all those hours writing Quran? Because they enjoy it. And this Shaykh, by the way, he's not half of the Quran. That's one thing that, because some people may say, oh, it's easier to recite the Quran when you're half of He's not half of He told that to me himself. He's not half of He knows the Quran. He recites the Quran. He's very familiar with the Quran. But he recites it from the Mus'haf. He has a Mus'haf out reciting the Quran, sitting in front of the Mus'haf. That's sometimes a lot more difficult than reciting it from memory. To sit for so long to recite the Quran from the Mus'haf, to sit in that position for a very long time. But he does it because of how much he enjoys it. That's Laddani Ibad. Because he knows who he's doing it for. He knows Allah Ta'ala. He knows that Allah Ta'ala, he's the one who loves this, that he recites his speech. He understands the speech of Allah Ta'ala. He's enjoying every, every single moment of it. And that's what Uthman radiallahu anhu arda. He said, If our hearts are pure, we would never have it. Enough of the speech of Allah Ta'ala. That's why I call upon every single one of us here that every night you know what the Imam is going to recite in Taraweeh, right? Before you come to Taraweeh, read the meaning of the verses. Read the meaning, the translation of the verses so that when you're in the Salah, you at least have an idea of what's being recited so that you can connect better in that prayer, so that you can enjoy that recitation, so that you can enjoy what's being recited in that ayat, so that you connect more and benefit. Because the meaning, of course, it helps. And that's why Imam Al-Tabari, rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, he says, I find it strange that one recites the book of Allah for years and he doesn't find enjoyment in it because he doesn't understand the meaning of it. That's the main cause that one doesn't find the enjoyment is because they don't understand the meaning. When you understand the meaning, you're one step closer to unlocking that enjoyment and that sweetness of worship. Ayyuh al-Kiram, this time of after Asr, I don't like to talk long because this time is very precious and very valuable. This is Friday. It's a Friday in Jumu'ah. And it's the last hour of Friday is coming close upon us and we are also fasting and the dua of the fasting person is accepted. The dua on the last hour of Friday is accepted. So this is a call upon me and you to make dua. I say to certain people, sit there and make dua for two hours. Say to me, well, how can I make dua for two hours, three hours? I tell them, wallahi, the things that you desire, they are more than two hours. Sometimes you spend longer than that. Write down the things that you want to ask Allah. Wa ta'ala. Sit there, ask Allah. Azza wa you perhaps will spend longer than two hours calling upon Allah. Azza wa asking Allah azza wa for the matters that you need. But how often do we actually do that? Sit in front of Allah. Use this moment to call upon Allah azza wa because Allah promises to grant you what you ask for. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, to grant us his forgiveness. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, to have mercy upon us. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, to guide us and to increase us in guidance and to guide others through us. We ask Allah Jalla fi ula, to aid us and assist us in doing that which pleases him. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, to have mercy upon us and our parents and to forgive us and our parents. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, to protect us from all calamities and evil. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, to have mercy upon us. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afaf wa al-ghina. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا اللهم من الراشدين اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وعيوننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور اللهم إن نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم رزقنا الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم إن نسألك حسن الخاطئ اللهم إن نسألك حسن الخاتمة اللهم إن نسألك حسن الخاتمة يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثم والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم إنا نسألك عيش السعداء ونزل الشهداء والحشر مع الأتقياء ومرافقة الأنبياء ونعوذ بك ربنا من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة العداء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من زوال نعم وفجاءة نقمتك وتحول عافيتك وجميع سخطك اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك نسألك اللهم حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب 
أحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم أنت ربنا لا إله إلا أنت خلقتنا ونحن عبيدك ونحن على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعنا نعوذ بك من شر ما صنعنا نبوء لك بنعمتك علينا ونبوء بذنوبنا فاغفر لنا فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسررنا وما أعلنا وما أنت عالم به منا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت اللهم اغفر لوالدينا اللهم ارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا اللهم جازهم بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات عفوا وغفرانا اللهم من كان منهم حيا فأطل في عمره وأحسن في عمله واختم لنا وله بخاتمة الإحسان ومن كان منهم ميتا فأنزل على قبره شآبيب الرحمات وافسح له في قبره مد بصره واجعل قبره روضة من رياض الجنة واجمعنا بهم في جناتك جنات النعيم اللهم إنهم أكرمون فأكرمهم اللهم إنهم أكرمون فأكرمهم اللهم إنهم أحسنوا إلينا فأحسن إليهم اللهم إنهم ألطفوا بنا فالطف بهم اللهم اشف مريضهم اللهم عاف مبتلاهم اللهم اهد ضالهم اللهم ارزق فقيرهم اللهم ارحم ميتهم اللهم ارحم ميتهم اللهم اجعلنا بهم من أهل البر والإحسان ولا تجعلنا بهم من أهل العقوق والعصيان يا رب العالمين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار نسألك اللهم أن تصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان كلهم عونا ونصيرا ومؤيدا وظهيرا اللهم فرج همهم نفس كربهم داوي جرحاهم عاف مبتلاهم اشف مرضاهم ارحم موتاهم تقبل شهداءهم كلهم عونا ونصيرا ومؤيدا وظهيرا اللهم عليك بمن ظلمهم عليك بعدوك وعدوهم يا قوي يا عزيز ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لندنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تقبل منا اليسير ولا تؤاخذنا بالتقصير وتوفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم تقبل صيامنا وتقبل قيامنا وصدقاتنا وسائر أعمالنا اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير I would like to say Jazakallah khairan to the Sheikh and Jazakallah to everyone, every single person who attended the lecture. I hope you find it beneficial and act upon this knowledge, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan.